Mmm, I do like saying that. Good. So that is Nasidro. Nasid. How far out? Nasid. Narciso Rodrigo. Welcome back. It's Friday evening and we are talking perfume. So on my recent video talking about unapproachable perfumes, which did pretty well actually, I think you guys enjoyed that. It was a bit of a roasty video where my descriptions got a little bit spicy. Somebody commented and said, can you please do one for approachable fragrances? And I thought, yes i think i can do that so anyway i have a bunch of perfumes here that i just grabbed this this video is a lot easier in the sense of it was really easy to find examples of perfumes in my perfume wardrobe that fit this category but it was also difficult because there are so many perfumes in my wardrobe that i think fit this category of being really approachable so i am a little bit challenged in trying to not pick too many and keep this video at a palatable length although i know some of you really love the the long rambly videos that you can just put on and listen to while you do other things and that's totally fine too. I want to keep this video short tonight because uh, my shoulder is still causing me a lot of grief and it's actually not that comfortable to sit here and film so <laughs> I probably should be standing but if I was standing the background wouldn't look as nice so we're, we're just going to go with it. First cab off the rank one that I think is very approachable both as a wearer and for those around you is Sandalwood Temple by Sana Jardin. Uh, I, I've talked about this an awful lot over the years. This to me is a woody fragrance and obviously you would assume it's some kind of sandalwood. So to me what this is is a very light woody fragrance. The woods don't feel dark or heavy in any way. This it's very airy this perfume uh, i feel it has a bit of incense in there so i feel like there's just like this very subtle hint of smokiness going through it but it's not at all overwhelming and it doesn't come across as being a smoky perfume as such but there's just that hint of it in there and it's also got a bit of sweetness to it as well so I just, I really love this. I think it's very calming. It doesn't feel like it's an overly complex fragrance. It could be in terms of composition, I don't know, but it just doesn't feel like that when you're wearing it. It's very calming. And I always consider this to be kind of a meditative scent or a focus scent. So I like to wear this, or I used to like to wear this to work. But as I said, I haven't worn it for a long time, but the weather I think is about to start getting a little bit cooler. And this might be a really good time to put this one back out on the rotation. So that is Sandalwood Temple by Sana Jardin. Next, keeping in with the woody theme is Xi'an by Ormond Jane. I was in two minds about this one. I thought it was between this and Tanja because I think Tanja is also a very beautiful, very approachable perfume. But when I thought about which one I gravitated towards first out of this line, it was this one. This too has a very woody element. It's a very smooth woody element. I think I've described it before as the imagery that comes to mind is sitting in a room made of bamboo. It's just bamboo floors, bamboo walls. All the surfaces are very clean. They're very smooth. They're very polished. And it's just a very zen moment. And that's, that's what I get from Xi'an. I think there's some fruits in here as well. I'm not sure what the fruitiness is, but it's very, it's very subtle and doesn't come off juicy as such but it there, there does seem to be a little bit of a fruity element it's quite musky as well which i like and there's also a hint of spice as well and i just find this is you know not a very screechy perfume it's not loud at all and i think those around you would feel comforted by the smell of this perfume and i think you can't feel anything but comforted and calm when you're wearing this perfume so for that reason i think it's very approachable Next up is one that's a little bit more on the floral side, and this is a Drop de Issy. Now, I traditionally have not been a huge fan of the Issy Miyake fragrances. A lot of them, even though their scent profile is beautiful, uh, just have a bit of an aquatic vibe to them, which as we all know, I don't get along with aquatic notes. So this one surprised me in that I really, really enjoy it. This is predominantly meant to be a lilac perfume and 
not being a person that's ever smelled lilac in person in my entire life. I couldn't tell you how photorealistic it is, but I do obviously draw similarities from this when I think of other lilac perfumes that I can't think of off the top of my head right now. But there are other florals in here too. There's a little bit of orange blossom, a little bit of rose. It's very fresh. Uh, it does sort of feel a little bit watery as well, but it doesn't feel aquatic like other aquatic fragrances. Uh, it's very creamy as well. To me, it just has a bit of a vibe of uh, a spa day where they've decorated with lots of florals. And so you get these sort of watery floral petal elements combining with this uh, creamy, clean skin, skin lotion, you know, clean musky sort of element. And it's very beautiful, very uplifting. And I think this is also a very approachable fragrance to wear as well. So that is A Drop to Issy by Issy Miyake. Next up is a rose fragrance. I was very tempted to put Delina La Rose in here. I ultimately didn't go with that one though because that fragrance still is quite bombastic and quite loud. And being Parfums de Mali, there is this element to that fragrance that can be headache inducing for some people. So instead, I went for this little one that's probably less known, and this is Daylight Seduction. This is by a little Australian brand called Motel Paradise. I haven't seen them pop up on social media recently. I hope they're still around. But this is just a really delightful um, rose water type of fragrance. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it, like a Turkish delight, but it's not heavy like some other Turkish delight type fragrances that I've smelled, which, you know, have this real syrupy element to it. This one has a sweetness, a little bit more sweet than just straight up rose water, but very light and airy and fresh like rose water. So, and I'm over halfway through this bottle. It's just a very easygoing, light wearing rose perfume that, which I don't think anyone would take offense to. You just smell really clean, really fresh. You know, there are other fragrances on the market as well that are similar in the similar vein, like O Rose from Diptyque. Uh, but for the, for the price point, I thought I would call this one out because well, at least when I bought this, it was under $100. So that is Daylight Seduction by Motel Paradise. Next up is one that I still really struggle to describe to people. But this is Mojave Ghost by Byredo. This fragrance, not this bottle, but this fragrance is a fragrance that I discovered very early on when I first started getting into non-mainstream perfumes. I was just drawn to this because it smelled very fresh and clean to me. This, I guess I would categorize as being a bit of a musky woody fragrance. It is woody, but it's the woods are very light. It's very, it is quite musky, but it's not fluffy. It's very clean smelling. I think there's fruits in here as well. I looked up the note profile of this a few months ago and there was an amber Accord listed in the base, but I would never have described this as being an ambery perfume. The sweetness in here just smells a little bit more, maybe slightly fruity, but just more fresh floral to me. So I don't really get any resins or vanilla necessarily. Yeah, it doesn't come off as being ambery to me at all, but it is very, very nice. I guess now that I'm smelling it, it does come off to me as being a very watery, fresh floral. What kind of florals? I don't even know if I could tell you. Very fresh. It kind of feels purple to me or a really translucent, mauvey, lavendery kind of color. That's what, that's the color that comes to my mind when I smell it. And just these very translucent woods and a clean musk. That's really what this fragrance is to me. And I don't think I'll ever get sick of it. And one of Matt's friends came around one night and they were actually going through some of my perfumes. It's one of Matt's party tricks these days is to show his friends my perfume collection. And then they stand there for 10 or 15 minutes smelling the perfumes. And 
one of his friends actually said if he ever gets married he wants his bride to wear this so if he ever finds his bride uh, i have already decided i will gift her her wedding day perfume <laughs> okay so the next one is one that interestingly is not my personal favorite from the house I picked this bottle up because a friend of mine was selling another perfume from this house and she'd bundled them together. So I didn't have any choice but to pick this one up. But because I picked it up in this bundle and thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this bottle? Because I don't, it's, this is not my favorite perfume. But the more I wear it now, lo and behold, I have developed a love for it. It's still not my favorite from the house. It is so widely loved. This does seem to be one of the favorites for everybody else from this house and therefore I am including it in this approachable perfumes list. So this is Splendiris by Decida Parfums. The reason I struggled with Splendiris is because I, I think this is quite a green irisy fragrance and there's a lot going on in here. I find the opening to be very earthy and also quite green and the overall effect to me is that for the first few minutes at least feels a little bit like i'm smelling green vegetation maybe some dying petals on a flower so old flowers that are sort of dying a little bit they're not rotting but they're starting to get a little bit long in the tooth and um you know damp earth damp mud uh, so that's <laughs> that doesn't sound very appealing which is weird because I've put it in an approachable fragrances list. But after I get through this little period, I find this becomes a very airy, whimsical and beautiful floral fragrance that has a very dominant like, iris element to it. But there's a lot, there's a lot of other stuff in here as well. There's other florals, but there's also vetiver in the base. And the vetiver in here almost has that that humid element that vetiver can have. I think that's what ultimately won me over with this fragrance was the emergence of these beautiful florals in the mid, that lovely orris butter that's not sweet. This fragrance is not sweet at all. And then also having sort of that vetiver in the base together with uh, things like cedar. And I think I'm developing an understanding of what everybody else really loves about this perfume. So that is Splendaris by Decida Parfums. The next one is one that I just don't hear people talking about. And maybe these days these bottles are pretty pricey, but they're still readily available on the market. And this is Tuberose in Blue by Altea. What I love about this, yes, it's Tuberose. So if you don't like Tuberose, you may not love this one. I guess perhaps a reason why a lot of people wouldn't necessarily think to talk about this one is that it does perhaps give off a little bit of a designer perfume vibe, but it does have a niche perfume price tag. But I don't know, there is something about this that just talks to me. It is just so ethereal and feminine and beautiful and I always just feel fresh and clean but beautiful and feminine when I wear it, when I smell it. I'm thinking of light transparent drapes that are just wafting in the breeze in front of a window that's overlooking the ocean even though this is not an oceanic perfume by any means there's lots of florals in here so there is tuberose but it's not i wouldn't necessarily say tuberose dominant i guess it, i guess you do get a quite a bit of tuberose in here but there are other florals like freesia there's a little touch of heliotrope but it's not too heavy and it doesn't go too powdery there's cedar wood in the base in fact in a way it kind of sits in a similar vein to Mojave Ghost but this one definitely has a more dominant floral aspect to it anyway if you like Mojave Ghost but you want something with a little bit more of a floral edge this one might be one worth checking out but again when I wear this one to the office I actually have had people tell me that I smell nice and Again, it's just a very easygoing, easy wearing perfume that I think most people would enjoy smelling on other people around them, as well as smelling it on yourself, obviously. Flat battery. All right, we have five more fragrances to get through, and I think I'll be able to get through them pretty quickly. 
The next one and probably the first one that sprang to mind when I thought about doing an approachable fragrances list is Blondine by Fresai. And look at that dent. I only bought this fragrance last year and I think I bought it in February and I didn't really start wearing it until around mid-year and then this happened. So it's uh, that's, I guess, a bit of a testament as to what I think about this perfume. This is the approachable perfume for those of you who want to explore more leathery elements in a perfume. This is, I guess, described often as being a lily fragrance and I do get a really beautiful lily type note in here. But for me, what really jumps out is this really beautiful, soft, buttery, fluffy suede note. And it's so delicately done. It just makes you feel like you're floating and it's beautiful. And again, I feel like this has really whimsical elements to it. It's also quite creamy in texture as well as being fluffy, how it can be creamy and sort of fuzzy at the same time i don't know but it's just so so beautiful and it's very comforting kind of fragrance so this is the type of fragrance where because it's so comforting people feel comfortable around you maybe they feel drawn to you and i just absolutely love it so that is blondine by Frasai. okay my neck is getting really sore so i'm gonna try and speed this up so the next one i think might raise a couple of eyebrows for it being on an approachable fragrances list but this is dear woman by amouage and the reason why i have put this on this list is because quite simply if you like to smell clean this is like the ultimate clean smelling fragrance this smells like really beautiful really expensive french soap it's got these really beautiful delicate florals it maybe is a little bit aldehydic I don't know I, I wonder if there's aldehydes in here it is definitely soapy so if you don't like soapy fragrances obviously this won't be for you but to me this is like you just got out of the shower and you can still smell the soap on your skin but instead of that smell wearing off in 10 minutes it lasts all day long. And I couldn't think of anything that would be more approachable than smelling like you just stepped out of a shower. So that is Dear Woman by Amouage. Next up is one that I have a sneaking suspicion might have been discontinued. So that's a bit of a bummer because I was trying to do this list with all fragrances that are readily available. But I apologize. I have a feeling if it has been discontinued, I still feel like this perfume is readily available because I still see it in online stores and stuff, or maybe I'm imagining that I see it. This is Narciso Rodriguez Poudre. Obviously, I have the little 20ml bottle. Sorry, I think it's Poudre, not Poudre. So for this one, if you haven't smelled a Narciso Rodriguez musk yet, then where have you been? <laughs> Uh, I shouldn't say that because there's probably a lot of people that haven't smelled them. They're very readily available in department stores. But this to me is um, a rose heavy version of the Narciso Rodriguez musk, but it also has a lot more powderiness to it. And I don't know what's giving it the powderiness, but I feel like this is more powdery than some of the other musk fragrances in the line. So it's like an actual powderiness, not just muskiness if that makes sense anyway i feel like this one has a lot of body it is quite sweet but not sugary sweet and i like to wear this one to bed a lot because i find it very comforting but i have even worn it very lightly to the gym previously and i've worn it to work many times as well so and again i feel like this is just one that isn't going to jump out at people as being offensive in any kind of way and it's not weird smelling it's just very it's just very approachable for want of a better word that is narciso rodriguez poudre whilst we are in the fluffy musky sort of category i could not do a list like this without including this perfume this is Bellam by les abstray a massive massive bottle although it is 100 ml so it's not that massive but it's a very weighty bottle 
This is like a leathery, fluffy Oris perfume that also has elements of chocolate and resins and vanilla. I don't know if it actually has a leather accord in it, but because I just smelled this one, I thought, oh, I'm getting a leatheriness to this now, which I don't think I ever really picked up on before. This is absolutely beautiful. It's very, very good for cold weather. And, I, and I'm glad that we are finally starting to feel the hints of a promise of cooler weather to come. It was still very warm today, don't get me wrong. But I have noticed that the evenings now are much, much more tolerable. Well, I don't know if there's much else that I can say about it. It's just a very welcoming, comforting kind of fragrance. And for that reason, it has to make this list because, again, I think if anyone were to smell this on you, they wouldn't be offended in any way, unless you oversprayed it, because I think this could possibly be a little bit bombastic as well. But this one does have that warm, cozy, you know, give somebody a hug and they will instantly calm down kind of element to it. So for that reason, it's approachable. And then last but not least is one from Teo Cabanel and this is called Ooh La La by Teo Cabanel. I want to say Ooh La La, but I feel like it's Ooh La La. To me, this is sandalwood iris and it has a nuttiness to it as well. And I think it is actually due to a hazelnut note, I think. And yeah, just you get this just beautiful, soft nuttiness. It doesn't come off too gourmand or too foody. It just has this slight gourmand element to it that makes it that little bit just mmm, but not you don't feel like you're wearing food. There is quite a bit of body to this fragrance, even though it doesn't feel too heavy or too weighty. And I think that this actually has uh, quite a bit of tobacco in it as well, which I have to admit, I never really, I don't know if I ever really got the tobacco before, but now it really jumps out at me. So maybe I'm learning to um, discern that tobacco note a little bit better these days. But again, it is, it's very smooth. It's quite velvety in texture, um, almost going in a bit of a fluffy dimension, but not too much. And yeah, I just, I think it's really, really delightful. And again, this is a really good one for cold weather. And again, uh, it's not loud, it's not screechy, it's very soft. You get this beautiful scent bubble around you. And I can imagine people, if they were near you when you're wearing this and they can smell your scent bubble, they would maybe scooch just a little bit closer to you to get a bit more of a whiff. So that is Ooh La La by Teo Cabanel. And that concludes my list for this video. As I said, I had so many that I could have added to this list because I think that approachable perfumes are ones that I gravitate towards. But hopefully that gave you a good range of uh, scent profiles, categories and prices of perfumes that I think fit this theme of being really approachable, both for the wearer and for the people who might be in the vicinity of the wearer. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me as always. Uh, share your thoughts below. Did you agree or not agree with any of these? And what in your wardrobe would you consider to be your most approachable fragrances? And maybe also share with me what circumstances you like to wear them in. All right, I'm out of here. Have a lovely, lovely week and weekend. Give this a like if you enjoyed it. And just a little bit of a heads up, I am traveling next week. Sadly, not to Exance like everybody else is going to, but I'm off to a work conference. So I, if I don't get anything filmed tomorrow, there probably won't be a video next week, but I will do my best. And on that note, as Lizzie from Rosen Jones would say, over and out.